the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, look at the life of the church. Set your mind and you may choose to close your eyes. Begin to imagine the very beginning of the church. The first call of Jesus to the first apostles and subsequently beyond Peter and Andrew, the two brothers, beyond James and John, the sons of Zebedee, the number grew outside Christ himself to the fold of two, to a fold of four. Then he had the twelve apostles. Then disciples started coming. We were told of 72 others whom he sent on mission to go to what? Minister, evangelize. Now, after Pentecost, there was no longer fear in the apostles. The church began to grow. From that minute stage, you see the church of Christ being expanded to every corner of the world. It is a fulfillment of the message of this same author in chapter 28, verse 19, when Christ said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, the point of emphasis here is the gradual growth from the seedling, the source of the church, that is Christ himself, and how it has expanded to every facet of the earth. Now, in today's parable, Jesus uses the imagery of the mustard seed, the tiniest of all seeds on earth, that is planted or sown and how it grows to become a shrub and from being a shrub it becomes a big tree that even other creatures begin to what feed on it first and foremost the perfect reflection of this mustard seed is the church herself the church is not just having a spiritual responsibility there are also temporal responsibility. From that small beginning, she has grown to be the biggest charitable organization in the world. And again, also a major employer of labor in the world. And also a major structure that reaches out to not just the soul of people, to the poorest of the poor. Look at the lives of the saints the church has produced. Mother Teresa, for instance goes on the streets, picks off people, clean them up to give life. It is simply living out the gospel. Now, number two, there is, this is, for the church, this is a general context of this parable. Now, there is an individual context for every gift and every talent that each and every one of us have. We are bound to what? Utilize it. Because what you don't nurture remains dormant and gradually dies. Only what is nurtured grows. And when it grows, it becomes of good benefits to yourself and even to others around you. What are your gifts? What are my gifts? Some are good at teaching. Some are eloquent at speech. Some are good administrators. Some are good script men or writers. Some are good at technical works. We are all abundantly endowed and each of us was utilize first recognize and if we don't know pray god for discernment to know then when we know our gifts like the little mustard seed let us sow it by acts of nurturing it to maturity so that its benefits will always be worth reaching out beyond the self you discover that it is the best of the air that comes to perch and even feed on the mustard seed because it has grown to give shade and to give her branches that people, that the breasts of the earth can come to feed on. So it is in our own context. Every one of us is gifted enough to be fruitful and it's a, it's a call to fruitfulness. So that at the end of time, when God looks at you, he says, my servant, my son, my daughter, I endowed you with this gift. What do you, did you do with it? Let us all be fruitful with the talents, with the gifts, 
no matter how little they are, because it is in sowing that we surely reap fruit that others can also May God help us all through Christ our Lord. Amen.